Hey everyone, this is Noah from Critique Quest. Today I'll be talking about episode one of Life is Strange. I want to quickly apologize for my voice before I get started, so I'm feeling a tad under the weather, so expect a little bit of grog. <laughs> Don't Nod continue to do really interesting things narratively and thematically. I said it in my Remember Me review, and I'm saying it again. Photography plays a vital role in Life is Strange. Firstly, what photography represents, a snapshot, a moment suspended in time, and secondly, the photographer, the eye that captures those moments, and the power that they have to freeze time. These themes, metaphorically and literally, play directly into the time travel aspect of Life is Strange. The application also ties beautifully into the world of the present through more practical facets, such as changes in photographic technology, the history and evolution of the medium, how it fits in today's society, etc. Photography and time go hand in hand here, both themes reflecting the other in some way, and it's so great to see a game tackle themes rather than situations. As far as the writing is concerned, I will state that if you didn't like Juno, if you belong to the this film tries too hard to be hip and funny, you probably won't dig Life is Strange. Because the writing's not exactly subtle in its teenness, pop culture related puns and references of other references, so if anything remotely hipster aggravates you, Life is Strange may not be the game for you. Unless, of course, you're able to see past it, and I would recommend that you try. Because characters are really intriguing so far. However, we don't know much beyond what lies on the surface at this point. Chrysalis serves as an introduction to this story. That being said, at the end of this episode, as the camera lingers on each character, both minor and central, during one pivotal moment, you get the sense that there's much more to these people than meets the eye. So even though Chrysalis sets the foundations, I expect that the next episode will quickly build on them. Play really feels refreshingly new, even though reading about it on paper might suggest the contrary. The Your Choices Matter mechanic has been used in many other games, though Life is Strange implements it in much the same way Telltale games did, and still do, with newer series such as Tales from the Borderlands. However, I think it's handled very differently here because of Max's ability to rewind time. You can literally play out any scenario in-game, whichever way you choose and as many times as you like. There's only a limit to the amount of minutes or seconds you can rewind, not how many rewinds you have at your disposal. So the player has the ability to see every feasible way a scenario will pan out. This in most games would reveal a good or bad choice with a good or bad result. Choices in life is strange, however, don't often have perfect outcomes. So the direct consequences that the game threatens truly spins you about. I mean, your ability to rewind every little conversation doesn't necessarily make things any easier. It's like that confessional scene in Silent Hill 3, if any of you remember. Should you forgive the woman and absolve the abhorred things she's done? Or do you deny her the right to be forgiven? Either way, you have to make a choice. Small actions in Life is Strange also threaten to have direct consequence, only these you certainly can't predict or really try out for yourself. Ultimately, there's a refreshing balance of certainty and uncertainty in the interactivity, which other games haven't quite achieved, and sets Life is Strange apart, I think. Visuals are picture perfect. See what I did there? That was pretty lame, even for me. With small things like Max's t-shirt that reads Jane next to the picture of a doe, a visual icon of sorts that appears then reappears in game. The dorm rooms that paint startlingly different pictures of each girl dwelling within them. Chloe's eternal sunshine hair and barely there eyebrows that make her moods that bit harder to read. Graffiti, some sweet, some bad, some goofy and others kind of scary. I like the bright colour palette, the small photographic touches like double exposures and lens flares. Max is fond of vintage photography, so it makes sense that this game, visually, looks as though it's been fed through a heavily nostalgic filter. I could really go on. Life is Strange is soundtrack heavy so far. It utilises the kinds of indie tunes that we associate with equally indie movies, which is to say that the soundtrack has this pure, sincere, almost coming of age feel to it. There really is a stellar selection of songs in the first episode from Kids Will Be Skeletons by a personal favourite of mine, Mogwai, to Piano Fire by Sparkle Horse. I will say it's used well too. There's one scene in particular in which Max puts on her headphones to drown out the gossip and chatter of her peers, slowly making your way to the restrooms, to the odd introspective observation and song, To All of You by Sid Matters, 
puts you right into Max's sneakers as she escapes the background noise of her life. Ambient music is sparse from what I could tell, but seems steadily melancholy and a little hopeful. I'd like to try and focus more on the score in the next episode, because it was quite easy to miss behind the soundtrack in Chrysalis. I would really recommend this game for anyone who enjoys narrative-centric titles that are thoughtful and stylish in its approach to the interactive genre. I'm not sure when the next episode Out of Time will be coming out, but as soon as the season pass becomes available, I'll be throwing my money at it. So what did you think of Life is Strange? Are you looking forward to the second episode? Please feel free to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. I'll see you all in my next video, a list of my favourite video game tracks. Psst, you can join my Facebook community page and follow me on Twitter by following the links on the screen. Thank you, bye.